Hello. <laughs> Welcome to this Hello. podcast. <laughs> this is Evie. <laughs> I met, Hello. well, I don't, you, this is my first Zoom podcast as well. We were really struggling on how to. The, the struggle, <laughs> the struggle of meeting. To set this up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Evie and I, or I know Evie through um, YouTube. I, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to like articulate how to start this, but um, essentially like, as you can tell by the title of this podcast, we're doing a podcast on maladaptive daydreaming. Um, and oh my God. <laughs> I found Evie on YouTube um, because I, I guess I'll like briefly just like say my beginning of maladaptive daydreaming or like what I, why I searched Evie in the first place. But I essentially, um, I had no idea what it was. Um, and a friend of mine asked me last year, like what I did to fall asleep. Um, Cause I've had really bad sleep problems my whole life. Um, and I told her that I had an imaginary world inside of my head that I go to every night, um, that I've had since I was a little girl that like have changed over the years. Um, and she was like, you should probably like talk to someone about that. Like, that sounds kind of weird. And I was like, okay. And I did, I, I told my psychiatrist and he told me like, that's actually a dissociation disorder called maladaptive wow. daydreaming. And wow. then, yeah, because not many, not many, like, um, not many people know about like therapists, psychiatrists. Like, oh, really? Damn. Nobody like they might know it, it exists. Like they might have heard about it before. But if you explain to them, hey, this is um, this is what I'm experiencing. They will not know what like they don't know the like this is maladaptive daydreaming. They know it exists, but they don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, I every single every single psychiatrist or medical professional that I have like dealt with talking about maladaptive daydreaming they literally did not know I knew more about maladaptive daydreaming than they did mm -hmm. and it was it's crazy and that's actually why I made my channel because not yeah. many people knew about it it's because you're the when I searched so immediately once I found out like, like the name of it I was like there's a name mm -hmm. like I had no I didn't even know this was something that everyone wasn't doing as well like I thought everyone was doing this um because why wouldn't they be doing that like in my head I was like you know what I exactly. mean like that's how I, I yeah. was like of course you go to an imaginary world in your yeah. head like that's kind of how I felt about it so when I searched on YouTube you were literally the only video of another girl talking about maladaptive yes, daydreaming I know and you like literally you like when I watched your videos it was the first time I've ever had someone say exactly like my experience in out loud I'd never heard it so I was like yeah. oh my god I need a message this girl I, I need to lot. talk to her I get yeah. I get that a lot like that's actually why I made my channel because I was like because I actually started on um tumblr and I started posting about maladaptive day love that yeah and I was like talking about maladaptive daydreaming because I found a community of people that finally finally someone else like actually is like experiencing what I'm experiencing but I could not in words like there was no way in one post I could say what I wanted to say mm -hmm. so I was like that's why I started my YouTube channel and I'm like this way I can actually talk about what I want to talk about and it be in a video and I can talk more about what I want to talk about and like it be you know makes sense and yeah. it's not just this like massive paragraph of like words um, yeah. which is why I made my channel and I was like no one is talking about this on YouTube mm -hmm. like maybe one like people will make one video yeah and then that'll be it yeah and there was no one who was dedicated to maladaptive daydreaming at the time and I was like I'm going to make I'm going to start like you're like I'm campaigning I'm for this yeah yes yeah and I was like it, okay I'll be the first can someone else can <laughs> I'll join? be the spokesperson now, like, yeah yeah and I was like but oh yeah I so many people in the comments were like oh my gosh I can't believe this like I experienced yeah. the same thing as you and I'm like this is why I've done this because yeah. I people don't know people don't know like they it, they are just like yeah, it's oh definitely gosh. like a niche community of like a very specific mm -hmm. symptom of trauma. I guess it's a symptom. Would you, what would, yeah. yeah. Well, do you want to explain well, to people what maladaptive daydreaming is for people well, who have no idea? Yeah. 
Oh, put me on the spot because I always Sorry. have a script for my videos. <laughs> um, I'm always like, this is what I'm going to say. Um, basically, maladaptive daydreaming is a very, and I don't want to use the word intense daydreaming because intensely daydreaming is actually something different to maladaptive daydreaming. Um, maladaptive daydreaming is basically, it's a form of dissociation. Originally, they didn't class it as a form of dissociation, but they do now class it as a form of dissociation. What was it originally in, to them? It was just it was just a separate thing because they because it was like very very because it's only two thousand and two I think that the idea of maladaptive daydreaming was brought up by a site I think he's a psychologist a doctor in psychology, um, Eli Summer. He first came up with the term maladaptive daydreaming, so it actually hasn't been that long. And there hasn't been much research done. Um, so first they like characterized it as this own little like thing. And now a lot of like people who do know about maladaptive daydreaming in terms of like medical professionals, they do class it as a dissociative like disorder. Um, but basically it's, it's, it's daydreaming to the point that it is affecting your life in some way, because it's it's basically disordered daydreaming that's the best way to like put it it's um it's very it, it's not intensely daydreaming because intensely daydreaming is very different to maladaptive daydreaming what, so what is the difference between intensive daydreaming like what it, i don't even know like what that <sighs> distinction is intensive daydreaming would probably be like you daydream a lot but it's not daydreaming at a level that is maladaptive daydreaming is like you have things called like paracosms which yeah. are whole entire worlds that you create in your head um you have very very complex inner like things going on in storylines the, the world yeah, yeah it's like it's basically the complex it like yeah. intense daydreaming is intense daydreaming you're daydreaming but it's not necessarily like you're creating this very, very complex inner like world, world kind of yeah. situation. Yeah. Do you want to explain um, what a paracosm is? Because you also were the first yeah, person yeah. I ever heard say yeah. paracosm. And then, then yeah. I had also a word to put to it because I never yeah. knew what to call yeah. that. Yeah. So um, a lot of the words that were created to basically explain maladaptive daydreaming and the symptoms and stuff are created by people in the community and one of those words is paracosm. And the word paracosm basically means um, a world that someone creates through maladaptive daydreaming. Um, but people don't quite, people who don't maladaptive daydream, I don't believe cannot even understand how realistic these worlds are. Like in my paracosm, my paracosm at one point in my life was more real to me than this world. It's like at that point in my life when I was maladaptive daydreaming so much, there was there was reality and then there was other people's reality. It was like it was so intense and so realistic and like detailed that it was as real, if not realer, than this world. They're like so intensely detailed, like and person and like yep. completely personable to each person, obviously. It's like their yeah, imaginary yeah. world. Yeah. You, it's so intensely detailed that it yeah. is just as real as this reality. And yeah. that's something that I know people who can't maladaptive daydream can never wrap their head around. But the intensity and the realist, like how realistic it is, is the exact same as how realistic this world is. Dissociation, I like know so many people are, are not going to know what this is. So that I'm just trying to like kind of like pun punch out like mm. information that will help them yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah. So I can explain dissociation. Mm -hmm. So dissociation, everyone dissociates. Um, well, yeah, I, I will say everyone dissociates, but there is a spectrum. For example, let's say you've just finished work and you're driving home and you don't really remember the drive home because you were dissociating. That is the very, very, very natural form of dissociation that everyone experiences. But then there becomes disordered dissociation where you are dissociating at a level that is interfering with your life. Um, you are using it as a way to cope with trauma. Um, 
and things that are happening in your life. And it can go from being just a dissociative, like dissociating from a, like, just dissociating, just kind of like feeling all fuzzy and stuff all the way up to dissociative identity disorder. Like it can go from that dissociating on the drive home all the way up to dissociative identity disorder. And there's a very, very, very big spectrum. Um, and it's very natural for people to be on the very, very low end of dissoci dissoci dissociation. But maladaptive daydreaming um it depends on how often you're maladaptive daydreaming how it's affecting your life but that is a severe form of dissociation is it that, a i didn't know it was a severe form <laughs> well it depends on how much it affects your life mm -hmm. if it's stopping you from being able to pursue your goals in this reality then it is if you are neglecting doing things that you need to do in this reality then it is um a severe form because it like if you aren't eating because you're too busy daydreaming, that's bad. That's severe. Mm -hmm. Like that's disordered. I have dissociative identity disorder. What do you um, want to explain? Is also, a, like what yeah. dissociative? Yeah. Just I also um, like yeah. yeah just to okay. disclaimer, like I did not know what dissociation was, and that that was my yeah. actual problem yeah. until about a year ago. Um, I yeah, just, well, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know until I like learned about all of this stuff. And then, mm -hmm. um, but dissociative identity disorder is basically, it's a, it's a very, very complex trauma disorder. Um, and if you put dissociation on a spectrum, dissociative identity disorder is at the very, very far end of, it's the very, very last thing on the spectrum. It is the most intense form of dissociation. Um, it is, you can only develop dissociative identity disorder before the age of nine. Mm -hmm. um because it's the way that the brain like kind of basically the way that you develop did or dissociative identity disorder is your brain or you are going through something so traumatic that your brain purposefully decides to not go through a certain developmental stage so you don't integrate fully like your brain doesn't your personalities your alter egos that you have when you're a child doesn't integrate because when you're born, you have something called alter egos. So you're not actually born with a fully formed personality. And that step, that developmental stage doesn't actually happen until about the age of nine. Um, someone with DID didn't go through that developmental stage. It's, it's crazy and it's so complicated, but that's basically what DID is. So you can't form DID like later in your life. This had to have been something no. you you brought from your childhood yeah. into your adult life. Yeah, okay. but, but a lot of people, like a lot of people, um, you know, have DID, but they don't realize until they're like 50. Yeah. yeah. It's not, yeah. It's like, it could be there, but you're not, if you don't have like, symptoms that are present or like you're just living your life and it's not like affecting you in any way just because you have it doesn't mean it's always going to be like so obvious to mm -hmm. even yourself what because are that's like how you've lived your whole life what ex that's another good point actually is like yeah to, to what you're just saying is like you don't realize um the way you're living you're, your life is, is yeah. incorrect or unhealthy or or just genuinely a, a trauma symptom. yeah like you actually have no it's idea because literally it's just your reality it's like that is, you never wait what did you say it cut out someone just tried to call me oh no you're God. fine you're fine <laughs> jesus i'm literally my phone is <laughs> on a like a, a what do you call like a, a soft I drink can love that what soft drink <laughs> Pase Pasito? um i'm curious like what um are some symptoms of DID? Like when did you um, like growing up first notice that you had like any sort of dissociation problems or like when did you first get diagnosed with dissociation and like, what did it look like? Well, the first memory I have of dissociative, well, actually there's a lot of memories um, I have of dissociative identity disorder and I do not know the order they come in. Um, but one of the major things was I actually, used to go into a particular mirror in a particular bathroom and when I would look into the mirror I didn't see my face 
What would you see? I saw, like? I would see a girl who had blonde hair, blue eyes. Her, she would be talking to me and be very, very energetic, um, and like talking to me, like kind of like she was on like a TV show or something, or like she was like doing a podcast or something. Like she was so, um, like you know, um, happy and stuff. And that is who I saw in the mirror. I didn't see me. I, cause I have naturally brunette hair and naturally Wait, brown so, eyes. So that you were literally seeing something that didn't even seeing, look like you. Yeah. I was, oh my God. I, was in the mirror, I, I did not know what I look like mm-hmm. even today, like to this day, when I look in the mirror, it is so hard for me to see what I look like. Mm -hmm. And that's partially because of like um, the DID, but also maladaptive daydreaming. Because in my daydream world, my paracosm, I don't look like what I look like here. Mm -hmm. What do you look like in in your... your... It's it's very, very slight differences. Um, Like I don't have green hair. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very, very slight differences. My eye colors, my eye color is different. I'm shorter. There's just like, there's very little like things that are different. And so in my head, that's what I look like, but that's not what I look like. Yeah. So mirrors are hmm. tricky. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I like do look in the mirror and I actually see myself and I'm like, uh, who, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so at a young age, you were seeing like images of a girl that was essentially like in your mind, pretty much like that wasn't yeah. real. Okay. So did you tell yeah. anyone about these symptoms or like, no. I guess to well, you, I, that was I normal also like yeah. as well. Well, yeah. I did later on, but it was like, it was like for my whole childhood, I wasn't living here. Mm-hmm. I was either in my paracosm, my daydream world, or I was like severely dissociating like I didn't have a childhood in this reality. I always, always say this to people when I'm like talking about maladaptive daydreaming and I like can't stress how much this is fact, but I was not raised by the adults that lived in this reality. I was raised by the adults that lived in my head. And that is crazy for people to like understand but it's, yeah it's so crazy yeah. like hearing you talk like I like because I've never had an a dial obvious like I I have more of a mild case of dissociation I didn't have DID mm-hmm. but even you talk like the the imaginary yeah. parents in the in your yeah. head that is like yeah. crazy that someone else like it's just it's really trippy actually to I hear actually, someone else I, actually I, I was not raised in this world this world isn't my home mm-hmm. like my my home is in my head and yeah. um that isn't healthy at all yeah but it's like I've it's grown also up like survival up. as well yeah yeah, yeah like, literally it is survival like I didn't grow up here mm-hmm. um and so it's like I don't live here mm-hmm. like I'm just like this like entity that just kind of floats in this reality but I'm but my brain is somewhere else over the last probably six months, um, I'm learning how to live in this reality for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Like I still maladaptive daydream and all that stuff, but I have never, ever, ever lived in this reality for this long. Mm-hmm. And I hate it. I hate it. Honestly, I want to go back <laughs> to my comfort place. I literally hate this I place. love the like, honesty. I, go back- <laughs> I know. I, hate I fucking place, hate it. I wish- yeah I really do <laughs> and I want to go back and I want and I want to rely on maladaptive daydreaming I I think that's part of the problem people who maladaptive daydream it's so comforting that it's, get, it's, the idea yeah. of getting better the idea of getting better is like what boring it's like boring and it feels like no well, it's oh, it's, it's well so I bad. I've like in, to live here? I've also like made a vow not a vow to myself but I know that there's like no way I'll ever actually ever fully stop maladaptive daydream like I know that like because I because I yeah. it's the only thing that helps me go to sleep because if I'm thinking too much like if I'm anxious or just thinking my brain won't stop I have such bad sleep problems literally horrible and maladaptive yeah. daydreaming is the only thing that has ever worked to quiet my mind because I can just go there and it it relaxes me and it's so, like And it's like, yeah, you could be here and it just, it just, yeah, it, people don't understand how comforting it is. 
Um, but something I do want to mention about maladaptive daydreaming is not everyone can do it. What would you say is like the, the well, I, the, it's funny you say this but, because my friend who I, I first like said out loud that this is what I did. Cause I never said that before out loud. She actually can't her, this friend of mine can't even visualize anything. She couldn't even visualize yeah. a green tree. She It was just the idea that a green tree is in her head. So I, I understand there's yeah. that distinction of like, there's some people who can't even visualize. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some people who literally, like some people are born with the ability to maladaptive daydream and some people aren't. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're born with the ability to maladaptive daydream, it doesn't mean that you're going to maladaptive daydream because you might not have the conditions that mean that you like maladaptive daydream. Yeah. Right. But there are a lot of people who can't, literally cannot maladaptive daydream, no matter how hard they try. Mm -hmm. So people who maladaptive daydream, it's a very, very like, you know, small group of people who are actually capable of doing that. So if you are a maladaptive daydream, you know, you have a very unique mind um, that is capable of quite powerful stuff. Yeah. And that's the same with dissociative identity disorder. Not everyone is able to dissociate at a level that, like that. Um, would cause DID. Yeah. Um, a lot of people aren't able to dissociate at a level that other people dissociate at. Yeah. No, I loved like seeing your videos, like gave me so much comfort. Like, cause you, I remember you had, it was called like unique souls or something like that. Like yeah, you had something yeah. and I was just like, yeah, wow, like that, that makes, yeah, I love that. And it, it made me like, so like, feel like I found like, a, I don't know. I just like thought yeah. that was a really nice way of putting like something that's maybe not like yeah. widely accepted as yeah. like cool. Yeah. Yeah. My username used to be, oh, I miss those days uh i shouldn't have changed my oh i i, I can go back to my uh, i could go back i think my brand will always be unique souls but i just changed my like um like youtube name to my my legal name or like mm -hmm. my my name because i was like i'll make a brand for myself yeah so people know my name <laughs> yeah. what like what would you say like um give someone the ability to maladaptive daydream you need to be able to, first of all, you need to be able to intensely daydream. Not everyone is able to do that. Like the mind is a powerful thing. Um, and you were either born with the ability or you're not like, that's literally how it is. Some, it's just the way your brain works. Mm -hmm. um, some people are, are able to visualize things very, very intensely and are able to kind of see things in their mind so intensely but that isn't the case for most people like a lot of people like your friend um can't do that yeah. literally cannot that to me is insane in itself <laughs> yeah. like how the fuck yeah. can't you like what yeah you know like someone can watch this who isn't a maladaptive daydreamer and try and maladaptive daydream and if they don't have the ability to they won't be able to yeah it's interesting because like one is like pointed trying to do it. And then the other one, it just comes from mere desire. Like mere, like yeah, this is what like, I, it's a, a, an unconscious like, thing. Like, it's just what you do. Yeah. It's just like you, like that is what you're doing. Like, no, like it's, yeah. it's quite yeah. bizarre. And it's like, like it, it, it's almost natural. It you is natural. Even, yeah, it, it, you don't even like, like intent. It's like definition of natural actually because like yeah. you don't no yeah. one can tell you to do it or not you're just doing it yeah. like you're just you that's could just... be daydreaming and not even realize like you yeah. can be valid after daydream daydreaming and not even realize there were so many times where um I kind of get home from uni and then I'm just like oh I'm just gonna daydream and then realize I've been daydreaming for 10 hours damn damn <laughs> but but in my mind, only an hour has passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, and it's not something I can, there, and sometimes the need to maladaptive daydream overpowers everything else. Mm -hmm. Like my need to like, you know, eat, my need to do my uni work, it literally overpowers me to the point where I cannot function 
at all in this reality unless I daydream first. Do you want to like um, describe, like, I don't know if you're like whatever, obviously to your own like yeah. comfort level, but do, do you want to describe what um, inside your maladapt, like in one of your paracosms looks like maybe your most recent one, the one that you've gone yeah. to most recently? Well, so one of the ones I have is it has my like power family, I call it because like the word para we use for character because character was kind of like like the, to us they're more than just characters they're like actual beings and they're yeah. actual people so the word we use for characters is para and so I call it my para family um basically I have like um several brothers I wasn't raised by like my parents I was raised by my older brother um and I'm studying the same thing that I'm studying like here mm -hmm. Um, that I'm studying in real life I'm studying to become a pharmacist so in my world I'm studying to become a pharmacist pharmacist as well um, crazy thing is is when I need to study I actually daydream about studying <laughs> love that and then daydream and so that daydreaming about studying I'm like actively doing that in this world but I'm daydreaming at the same time mm -hmm. um, and I still live with my older brother in that world um what does it look he like has children like, like it well when there's a house where we live there's like there's like very specific like locations mm -hmm. like there's university there's um there's the house that we live in and a lot of the scenarios that happen like happen in that house um and when the scenarios happen they can happen over and over and over again like mm, yeah I will yeah I will daydream <laughs> about the same conversation the same scenario like, yeah, over that's so yeah, funny like, you do that the, too yeah damn yeah that it's like everyone who mallet after daydreams does this I, I like, have I the know, same it, situation that I play every single yeah, night for it's been like yeah. five years of the same same situation yeah, it, it's the exact yeah. same thing over and over and over again that is very very common like I yeah. think everyone who mallet after daydream does that I know someone who like literally she's been daydreaming um for like what over 10 years and literally 11 days have passed what do you mean 11 days have passed oh like, like within, 11 days within oh my yeah. god damn damn yeah I don't even have like a like a a time thing in mind yeah, like my, you know what I mean yeah, same, like no time same. really has passed it's kind of just all pockets of yeah, different just, worlds yeah yeah, yeah. different yeah. like pocket well mine's like pockets of like scenarios and stuff mm -hmm. like there's like the layout of the paracosm and then there are just scenarios that are happening in the paracosm. And it's like, I could have like a daydream about this specific scenario and then time will pass, but I'm not necessarily actively daydreaming about that time that passed. And then I'll daydream about this like scenario and then like pockets, like time pockets kind of yeah. that I see through into that world. And I daydream about the scenario over and over and over and over again. Um, so it's like what is happening in the paracosm is happening in the back of my mind. Yeah. Like there are things happening right now in the paracosm, but I'm not intensely like daydreaming about it. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. It's like, it's like there's a timeline that I can jump through all of different it. sections yeah. of the timeline and daydream about those specific scenarios over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Tell me if you relate to this, but I remember mm -hmm. like if I want to change like a wall in my one of my houses or like a world in like a house in one of the worlds, I can't just change it. Like I have to get a construction team to come in and bulldoze the wall and redo it. And then my mind will accept it as a new wall. That is the only yes, way yes, you have to do that too. That is, yes, 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 yes. And I this, can't because it, cause it needs to like, be real like it needs to be really changed like right? for me to and accept that it's oh there my gosh sometimes that this doesn't happen with everyone but with me it's like if it's not realistic it can't happen yeah no like, I do you know what yeah. I mean if it's not something that can actually happen then it won't it de okay so it depends for me because I saw some that were like people get really whimsical like with their with their worlds I like will get like my my things that aren't real that like couldn't happen is everything's on water for me in my world 
for some reason. That was like my next question for you, actually, because because I I um I was gonna ask like if you're if like you have like talked about this with a psychiatrist and what like it means like your fantasies what they mean because I've Mm -hmm. briefly talked with mine um about like what it means to have this like aspect of water in all of them except my first one actually except the one I had is like a literal my first ever one doesn't have water every single other one is like either on water I have a moat in my house and my scenario has to do with water that repeats every wow so it's like so weird thing so that can't really happen like the aspect of like yeah you know, like that's there are like the kind of things, stuff that yeah. like doesn't make sense but I accept it in my head but yeah, that's that's like, it yeah like there's a different kind of like what what can realistically happen in your head to what can realistically happen in this world yeah like I feel like the rules are very different to in your head than they are in this reality um but there still are rules like for example um I could be having a conversation with one of my paras or one of my characters and they, I want them to say something, but it's not in their character to say that thing. And Mm -hmm. I cannot for the life of me make them say that. Yeah. They will say what they want to say. They will say something that like fits their character. And it's like, can you, can you just, can you just, can you just play for for a little (laughs) bit? Yeah. Like, and and it's things like that. It's like, I want to go and do this thing in this world but sometimes the like the world has more power over its own self than I have over it it's Um, I I wonder what that is like I wonder what part of our brain like won't allow that non-truthfulness to come forward I've actually made a video about this Mm -hmm. but characters can become so intense and so their own thing that they become something called a tulpa a topper yeah tulpa I've made a video about this it's called tulpamancy Mm -hmm. um and it's basically when a para or a character that lives inside of your head becomes so detailed and realistic that they literally become their Their own own person oh my god yep and they and it's different to alters like in DID you have alters um it's different to that but anyone can create one it doesn't it's not something that is um only people who have dissociative identity disorder because it's completely different to that but a tulpa um is when you literally create either on purpose or by accident a being that is so realistic and all of that that it becomes its own person to the point that it can it makes its own decisions without you consciously making the decisions it basically can exist in your mind without you consciously creating it. Yeah. Like it, you yeah. don't have to, yeah. Like you could, you don't have to actually be willing it to say things and do things. It will do things on its own and it exists without the conscious mind needing it to be there. Yeah. So it literally exists subconsciously. Um, Is that And it dangerous? becomes its own being. I don't know. I don't think it is. Um, I think it, it can be dangerous in the sense that people might kind of lose their life in this reality to, because that's when things become very, very intense. Um, but it's actually a practice that is purposefully done and it's called tulpamancy. Um, I have a whole video about tulp because it's very, very complicated and it's what can happen when you maladaptive daydream so intensely yeah things start to become its own being and you stop having control over them yeah well I guess my question like still remains like is there anything like from your paracosms or like intricate worlds that like have meant like this is how you view yourself or this is how you view other people like have you got like have has that like has there any been has there ever been any discoveries made um with kind of like a analysis of yourself through uh, your imaginary world? Honestly, I think all of the, that that kind of work has been done internally. I've mm-hmm. never done it with a psychiatrist or anyone else. It's just like internally, I kind of like look at it. Um, for example, a lot of the figures or the paras or characters in my mind 
in my comfort world, in my power family, are male. And that kind of signifies that a lot of, when I was younger, all of the people that I could really rely on were male, mm -hmm. like male adults. So that crosses over into my paracosm where I have created comfort characters and comfort powers that are male. Um, and a lot of the kind of parental figures are male because all of the parental figures in my life that I could rely on were male in this reality. So, oh, I think, and, and there are a lot of scenarios that happened in my paracosm that I kind of like took a step back and was like, I am using my inner world, like I'm using my paracosm to process trauma that has happened in this world. So if something really, really traumatic happens in this world, it will happen in my paracosm. And then I will spend time in that paracosm processing that trauma and using my comfort powers to help me deal with that trauma. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of like things that I need to work on in this reality, I work on in my head with the help of my powers mm -hmm. and like that safety net. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to me because like um like it's like something you create so it's like where does this desire come from you know like what where did the desire come from to escape to this world and like why what is it about this world that you've created that like makes you feel comfort you know like i i asked that to myself because like i don't know and like and it, and it, yeah. it gives me great comfort is the thing and so um i one of like something I learned like with the aspect of water um what because my psychiatrist said he like just like this is the one who told me about maladaptive daydreaming he just like threw a bunch of shit on me he was saying like um like one of my paracosms is a cardboard box that I live in and no. it's like the coolest cardboard box ever. It has like everything I need. It's like a tiny home, but smaller. Like, like I have to lay down in it, but it has everything, like every gadget, like there's this for the food and it's like kind of like whimsical, but it's like a whimsical cardboard box. And every single day it rains, like every day it rains. And I live in this cardboard box. And this is like one of my fantasies. Why is this my fantasy? Like, why am I fantasizing mm -hmm. about being homeless? Like, I don't know. And so I told him like, this is just one of the scenarios. Cause he was, he wanted to like kind of dissect it. Um, and he came to kind of the conclusion that um, that's like somewhat how I feel about myself is like abandoned wow. in a sense. So, and that's, and, and that a really illuminated something I had never acknowledged. He like really said this. And that's why I ask, I'm like, I wonder for other people who deal with this, like what, like kind of like aspects of their paracosm translate to how they even feel about themselves, like how they feel about who yeah. they are and like their self-worth yeah. even like stuff like that. So that's yeah. what I found interesting. And the aspect of water, um, he said was like rain and water if you're safe in this cardboard box or in your house, because in all of my worlds, it rains every day for some reason, all of them. And like, it's an, he alluded to the fact that like, you're safe with yourself. Like I'm safe with me and it's scary out there and it's raining out there, but I'm safe in my house. So that's how yeah. I, I guess felt and feel still internally. Um, and it translates in my fantasy world that I feel yeah. this way of, I feel safe with me and everyone else and everything else is dangerous. And that's the aspect of water. That's literally, that's literally, people always say like, what's the cure? What's the cure? What's the cure? And I'm like, I can't give you a cure because there is a cure, but, but the thing is you can make it to a point where it's not destroying your life, but that's not an answer I can give you because the answer lies within yourself. Yeah. Like I, I, have been able to kind of push through relying so much on maladaptive daydreaming because of inner work that I have done with myself mm -hmm. I can't the cure is honestly to look at yourself and be like why am I doing this yeah what's going on in my life like what is the reason that I am so intensely daydreaming why is the maladaptive daydreaming why am I so dependent on it and I always say that that is the cure 
mm-hmm. you need to look within yourself and figure and find the cure like I can't give it to you because my cure isn't going to work for you because we have completely different situations um yeah. so you I like um with your maladaptive daydream you can do it like around your room right like you you can yeah. maladapt that's yeah so I've never done it like that I've never done yeah. um I've only ever done it like with um well yeah I've never done it walking around I could do it like anyone can do it. I mean if you do it you can do it anywhere but I would mostly say I do it before I go to sleep that's like my it's like my mm-hmm. my safe space yeah you know that's how that's when I would I used to do it mm-hmm. and I still do it actually like that um I sometimes I just don't want to get out of bed because I want to dissociate like I want a maladaptive daydream so and I'll spend all day in bed just so I can maladaptive daydream yeah so I can do both so when you but so to put at. it like for for people that don't know like how how does it look to like maladaptive daydream like as you're like awake and conscious and like walking around well, a lot of people who do maladaptive daydream do repetitive things like rocking or pacing back and forth. Um, I have a whole video of like maladaptive daydream and calling on camera. I see um, where that. I basically yeah. Record, yeah, 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 where I basically recorded myself daydreaming. Um, but some people don't. Some people just literally lie in their bed and close their eyes and go to that place. Is it more it's, like immersive for you to do it like walking or no? Or is it the same? Yes. It, it, it depends on the, the scenario I'm playing out. If I'm walking next to my para and I'm daydreaming about walking with my para, then yes, mm-hmm. the walking helps. If I'm daydreaming where there is a, like a very interactive scenario going on, then yes. Mm-hmm. Or, or like a scenario where I'm kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It depends on the, the scenario I'm daydreaming about. Sometimes lying in bed is better for the scenario. Sometimes walking around is better for the scenario. It just depends on what I'm daydreaming about. Yeah. What would you like say is like, um, like a pro to maladaptive daydreaming and like a negative to it? A pro is, Besides like the, the feelings you get from it, like besides like the escapism it is, like what, what other pros would you say? Gosh, uh, the pro, uh... <laughs> I guess it all kind of ends up being escapism at the end of the day. Cause I'm thinking about it yeah. too. I'm like, cause there's it, pros. It depends, it, it depends on the person, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Because if, if, it is helping you like for example if you are dealing with something very traumatic and something that is um not going well in your life um and the maladaptive daydreaming is helping you then that is a pro Mm -hmm. like if it's helping you deal with that then that is a pro a negative is it can impact your life so severely that you stop being as productive as you can be in this reality i had to stop being a person yeah I had a psychiatrist. I see. I like, I never got to a point where it was, um, like, or maybe I don't know. That's the thing is I don't know how much it truly was affecting my life because it wasn't a conscious thing. I even knew Mm -hmm. I was doing that was like, not like tends to be with everyone or whatever. Um, so like, I don't know how much it was affecting my life, but I did get told by my psychiatrist, as long as I am maladaptive daydreaming, he verbatim says, as long as I'm maladaptive daydreaming, I will never fully grow up. That's what he said. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yep. That is fact. Um, And I hate to say it, but that is fact. Uh, For example, I like, this is, this is bad. And I, I, I also have DID, so I do have to take that into account, but I am younger than my body's age because of this Mm -hmm. and um like it's very complicated because I do have parts of my brain that are the same age as my brain but but because I have wasted so much time in this reality in this reality in my head I am not I am not improving or growing in this reality Mm -hmm. like 
I can daydream all I want about becoming a pharmacist in my brain, but unless I'm pursuing that in this reality, I'm yeah. not a pharmacist. This is a random question, but do you think, cause I thought about this too. Do you think like thinking like that in your head about you becoming a pharmacist, you are doing the absolute most um, practical form of manifesting that there is. Do you think yes, that? Because yes, I think yes. I've been doing that if this I whole was, time. If I, yeah, if I was in daydreaming about becoming a pharmacist, no, I would not be like doing we're, this. I we're like intensely manifesting our lives, yep. essentially. Yep. Yep. Like I didn't realize that. that. 100% okay. correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I like wasn't daydreaming about doing this, I would not be doing this. So it Absolutely helps. no way. It helps in a it way. Helps. Yeah. It helps you achieve goals if it's yeah. used correctly. That's, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have like, a, like, yeah, like, cause I want my real life in this world to match what is happening in my head. Oh my. Okay. So I, yes, essentially, I mean, you, I guess everyone would want that, but it's funny because like, I like the, what I had in my head from when I was a little girl, like to now, like, I feel like my life unconsciously has mirrored it without me even knowing it. And I wondered, I'm like, yeah. am I manifesting this? And I don't yeah. even know it. And I think I might be. I think I might be. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, because I do everything in my power to make my paraclysm a reality in this mm -hmm. world. So by me doing stuff in my paraclysm, I am willing myself to do things in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that that is definitely a positive. Like I would not be here studying at uni if it wasn't because I again like I can sit down and daydream about studying in my paraclysm and I will actually study in my yeah. real life mm -hmm. um to I know people are going to be interested about like what it's like to go there so I kind of want to like touch on that a little bit just so people can have like a vague understanding of an experience of maladaptive daydreaming um I this mm -hmm. is how I've described it to my friends tell me if you agree or disagree but if you were to visualize like your childhood home and like walk through your childhood home in your mind like and you know where every cabinet is you know where every like thing is you know where everything is and you can just walk through it in your imagination and that's how I would describe the the intricacy and detail of a paracosm yeah, yeah. but see that's not going to work for everyone because yeah, our smell adaptive right. daydreamers, yeah, our smell adaptive daydreamers don't realize how unique our brain is. Okay. And how most people do not have this ability. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's, they're still not going to understand it. It's like, I, the way I describe it is like, go and walk into your kitchen right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Go and walk into your kitchen right now. That, that <laughs> is like, okay. Pretend, pretend this, like pretend you are sitting here mm -hmm. and pretend that you are not getting up. Okay. Pretend that your physical form is not getting up. Now stand up in real life and go and walk into the kitchen. Okay. But remember you're pretending that you're still sitting down, yeah. go into your kitchen, look around. That is how intense our daydreams are. We, yeah. are, we could be like, you are physically sitting here, but you are in the kitchen, right? Yeah. So we're pretending that you're sitting here, but your mind is in the kitchen. That is how intense it is. Yeah. Like people yeah. don't, they, they, they just can't wrap their heads around it. I'm like trying to like find the words to like explain like kind of like an experience, but I, I guess like to your point, like it's not gonna, like, I, I don't know actually. It's like kind of tough to describe. I, yeah. yeah, like, I don't know, because I can only really describe other imaginary situations that would also be, I guess, exclusive to yeah. people that maladaptive daydream now yeah, that I'm thinking about I, I, it. Yeah, yeah. It's literally just, just like touch the walls, like touch the walls. That is how real it is. is how's your, how does your mom like, um, like respond to kind of like your like super like openness with everything i'm not open to her with her with her at all has like, she has she seen your videos or anything i don't think so i don't think so <gasps> no way wait does she no. know does she know anything I don't about no no <gasps> what 
Oh, are you, are you not close with your mom? She no, no, not really. Like, well, yeah. I am, but I'm not. Um, she like, she knows about like that. I have a very, not a large online presence, but I do have an online, somewhat online presence. She knows that. Um, she knows that I make money from online. Um, but that's it. Does she know like what your like subject matter is or no? Not really. Does she take an interest in it or no? I don't think so. Damn. Damn. Does she know about the DID? I think I've explained it to her, but she's the kind of person who is like. Doesn't want to hear it. Let's ignore. Yeah. Let's ignore. Yeah. You don't have any God, problems. I hope she doesn't, You're fine. I hope she doesn't watch this. No, because I, see I that yeah. that because it because it's childhood trauma that will that will then have she will have to accept that something went wrong in my childhood. What do you mean? Like that she would? Ha- oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. like something went that wrong. she had some sort of like un like missed something or like did yeah. something wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's like a tough part of um going to your parents about like your own issues is because they don't want to accept that they made a mistake. So yeah, you get stuck in this kind of like time warp where like you're wrong and they're right. And that's, there's no kind of fighting it. Yeah. 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 That's exactly yeah. it. So I, I can talk to her about it and she'll be like, sure. Damn. Damn. Sure. Yeah. do you have like somebody that you do go to like your fiance or like yeah, yeah. My, my fiance my lead up to daydreams um he does yeah oh my god wait this how did you guys crazy. meet my lead up to daydreaming like what? this she was she was like she messaged me and she's like oh my gosh I go through the same thing so did Can she we talk had she seen your videos before and then yeah. she messaged but, you yep yeah. yep yeah. And you, then you met your fucking fiance from her following your fucking that's that's amazing. That's literally amazing. I know, I know. And it's like we're like oh, it's that's like crazy. Like what a what a I'm fucking like, thing to bond over. I know. And I'm like, we we talked and talked and talked and talked. Like we talked every single day for like eight months. And then we're like, do you want a date? When you said like we met maladaptive daydreaming, I literally thought you meant like in your fucking imagination. Because you also, you also, was it you or no, another video no. I watched about like tailing off into each other's, your friends' <laughs> imaginations? No, no. The, the, the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, is that we both, okay. So we're in a gay relationship. Um, mm-hmm. We both identify as being gay. Um, and she, I, like, I, we both, okay, this is, I'm so stupid. I didn't realize she was gay. I didn't okay. realize she was attracted to females, even though she wore a pride bracelet. Okay. And Come I thought on. she was just, like, <laughs> a strong ally. I'm I like, love wow, that. You're just an ally. Yeah. Um, and I, like, we, we would talk about our daydreams. And then I would be like, yeah, so, like, there is a para that I've created that is exactly like you that I'm dating. Stop. Not you guys flirting. <laughs> and she was like, using fucking and she this. was like, and she was like, yo, same. <laughs> and it went on like that for eight months. You guys <laughs> dated literally in your mag- your mind in our imaginary in world that's crazy yeah that's so nice though that you have like not only an outlet but someone who like literally also has it's a, yeah Dis- what's like her level of dissociation like in comparison? it's pretty high because um she does have a she does have like potential like she mm, her questioning whether she has did so her level of dissociation is very very high Mm -hmm. and it's like she might not have did but it's like her level of dissociation is extremely high like mine so it's like we can bond over that yeah what like other there's like d there's did isn't there's like depersonalization is that one of them yeah yeah so that's when you don't you like detach yourself from yourself like you you like look in a mirror and you're like eh, I think I have that's not me I have and do that you realize 
Yeah. I, I have the one where yeah. I look in the mirror and I don't see myself. That's yeah. like a and constant. And derealization is thinking that this world isn't real, feeling like this world okay. isn't real. Okay. Yeah. And I have like <laughs> both. <laughs> Damn. It's crazy because that's like DID. Yeah. Like when you were saying like um the first symptoms you noticed was looking in the mirror. Um I my that was my first symptoms of dissociation too I remember looking in the mirror as a kid being like that's not me like just but it but not so that I saw someone else because that's interesting that you saw like a completely thing that wasn't there um I I saw a girl like even now like I still have it um it hasn't fully like I haven't fully connected back to myself which I'm going to like eventually hopefully um it feels like I'm looking at like a girl that I know, but I don't know her that well. And she's just, I, I've seen her around. That's kind of the best way I can explain it. So she like, I know who she is, but it's not me. Like, it's just some girl. I yeah. Know. That's kind of the best way I can describe that symptom yeah. of dissociation. Yeah. 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 Is depersonalization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's funny. Be- yeah. Derealization is like, not feeling like this is reality did you ever experiment with psychedelics no I haven't okay the reason I asked is because (laughs) have what is like your like um because I think I expedited some aspect of dissociation through psychedelics because um that's very common is that common okay because I because that's exactly what happened to me (laughs) Um, yeah, that's I was, very common. Yeah. I was already dissociated and taking psychedelics is a very dissociated feeling because you are literally in your own world, like high, like you are just like absolutely dissociated from the rest of the world in this like fictional, like reality that doesn't exist where you get to be in your own world. Like genuinely, that is what hallucinating is pretty much like to a degree. Um, and so I would take like consistently without me real this was unconscious like with unconsciously doing this I was taking so many psychedelics over and over again like each day like I wouldn't even have a day off and um I remember and those feelings and those moments being like this is this is right like this is what I'm supposed to do I'm supposed to kind of retreat and I'm supposed to kind of disconnect because this feels good like this feels really good and that kind of expedited me becoming very dissociated because I started to not need the rest of the world because I, all I needed was me and psychedelics and nature. And that was it. And so I just started to retreat even more. And I I stopped answering people's texts and then just became this like dissociated girl that like it dug myself a fucking hole now that I have to claw my way out of, um, that I didn't even know I was doing. And I, I wonder like if other people, um, their experiences with psychedelics if they've done the same thing if you already had pre predisposed dissociation and you started experimenting with psychedelics that's yeah what, yeah that that is actually really common how like do you know like um like how do you know like so much about um like that for instance like how do you know has it just been because like- I know I, I've talked I've spoken to a lot of people mm-hmm. and I've also read like a lot a lot of papers and um like I've done a lot of lot of research because I was so curious at like the brain is such a powerful thing and to me that was just amazing that the brain could do this thing so I was so intensely like wanting to kind of know as much as I can about this as I can um and I know a lot of people who are maladaptive daydreamers because a lot of people do reach out to me um, yeah because I'm like the only person yeah consistently talking about it or who has a very like I don't have a very large following but compared to the like maladaptive daydreaming community you know um a lot of people aren't talking about it and so a lot of people reach out to me so I do know a lot of people and I've heard their stories mm-hmm. and, and stuff so and you've heard like the psychedelic kind of story yeah I'll, yeah I've heard that from quite a few people what would people say? Like, I'm curious, like, kind of like. Well, they, exactly what you said, literally mm-hmm. exactly what you said. Like they would use it kind of like to escape and it became a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What like specifically 
in your eyes do you think was the cause of maladaptive daydreaming like what if you're comfortable talking about like the trauma like definitely like uh well definitely trauma obviously yeah um but I think the stability of my caregivers Mm -hmm. um so I lived in three different homes at the same time what do you mean and So I lived with my grandma, I lived with my mom and I lived with my dad, completely different houses. Mm -hmm. And I think the unstability of that and not knowing whose place I was going to stay at that night and the fact that they, um, the environment that I was living at in those three different houses was so different. I did not have that stability. So I made that stability in my mind. Mm -hmm. I think that is a major thing that caused it. Like there are a lot of other traumatic things that happened in my life um, that I can't share on here because it's like, um, it would like trigger so many people. Mm -hmm. But there were other like traumatic things that were happening in my life and events that had happened. But I think that is a major component to it is that I did not have the stability that a child needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that, that makes perfect sense actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then I made that stability in my mind. I'm like, I had a place in my mind that I went to. That was reliable. That was like, yeah, that was reliable. And it was like, that's where I live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where I live. I don't live in these three houses with very different environments. I live in my head in this very stable you know, house where the parental figures are very stable as well mentally. Are you because I did have like parental figures that weren't mentally stable, which is another thing that yeah. Um are would you say or other like like are you like a highly sensitive person? Is this like do you think this is like only goes with people that are highly sensitive? I I think in a way yes. I think we pick up on things, but we dissociate from them very easily. Mm -hmm. So yes and no. Yeah. It's like, we're like, oh, I can sense this, but no, bye. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's like, I think that's like why, like, and this is again, like me trying to connect the dots. I don't know if this is even true, but in my head, I'm like, I, I feel like people that do dissociate is because of a sensory overload. It's like too much you know, so you literally have to just be like, no, like opposed to people that aren't sensitive can kind of like get away with dealing with trauma healthy in a healthy way. And like, we just can't. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, that's literally it. I think we're just very sensitive. And we're just like, I cannot deal with this. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I'm really curious, like when I like wanted to, like, I'm really curious about like what other people's worlds look like. Like that to me is so yeah. fascinating. Like, do you, are you like comfortable with like kind of giving like a detailed kind of like rundown of like one of your favorites or like your most first one or whatever, or, or your I scenario? Yeah. yeah, I can. So one of my, um, uh, like I've talked about before, like me in a world, it's like the majority of the time is spent in a house where my brothers live. Um, and scenarios might be like, I'm because I have a lot of I'm chronically ill so like I have times where I have to go to hospital and stuff Mm -hmm. um and so I will have a scenario that plays in my head where I have to go to hospital but they are like the scenario is happening in that like in that world instead of this world Mm -hmm. so I literally just take things that are happening in this world and chuck them in that world and create a realistic like like kind of squish it into to fit that world realistically yeah um like I literally everything I deal with in this world I do in that world as well mm-hmm. like that is and and it's just like it's just done with different people what's like um a scenario that replays for you um oh again like gosh. only I, share what you yeah, want to share no, as well no I I just like because a lot of it's really heavy stuff so I'm like trying to think of one that is like not heavy um I think heavy is fine me me being like I'm fine with heavy like personally but yeah. again like this is you I mean like, I can no I can I can talk about this um but it, it's so bad the mental health system in Australia I mean I, I want to say everywhere in the world but like specifically like in Australia I know um it is horrendously bad Mm -hmm. 
and I have had situations where like ambulances have been called and the police have been called um, because I'm having like um like a episode um and so at the moment what's replaying in my head over and over and over again is a scenario that has happened recently where like um an ambulance was called the police were called like the police came and I was literally having seizures Mm -hmm. um and they like had the ambulance come then and that scenario is playing over and over and over and over and over again in my paracosm with my like paras it's why do you think like like, yeah that's so interesting that like situations that people tend to repeat seem to be traumatic like there's almost like an intoxic intoxicating thing we get no no because you the psychology behind it is it's because your brain is trying to process it Mm -hmm. so when it's happening in the moment your brain is like i am not safe enough i need to put all of my resources into being safe Mm -hmm. so the part of the brain that processes what you are um experiencing stops and then what will happen is the information that is coming in will go to a different part of your brain instead of the part of the brain that stores processed memories so the reason that you are playing it over and over and over again it's similar to a flashback like a ptsd flashback yeah in terms of your brain is trying to process that trauma because it hasn't been processed because when it happened, your brain didn't process it. That wasn't important at the time. It's weird because like um, with different, like the scenario that plays in mind is not something that's happened, but it's traumatic. It's like something no, I'm making no. up that's yeah, never no, happened. No, that, that has happened to me before. When, before I really, really looked in with, into myself and kind of like went in depth and like, was like, oh, that's why this is happening. I think you'll find that just because it's not something that exactly lines up with something that has happened in this reality, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You are still processing something traumatic that has happened in this world. It's just you're viewing it in a different way in your mind. It's like, yeah, I guess it's like the story, like in which like the the message is like there that's like applies to you. It's just in a story kind of thing yeah it's just like manipulated to fit yeah um your a way that you can process it that's fucking crazy now I'm like in my head trying to decipher what the fuck all this means yeah yeah like you could be trying to process something that like how this scenario this traumatic scenario that's happening you know like why is my brain making me do this but if you like look Mm -hmm. in depth there is some sort of like message in it I um I have a replaying thing of it being the end of the world, like it being doomsday. That's like my thing. Like that's something I find interesting, like that I want to replay this kind of like, it's like a tsunami or something. It's kind of different in each thing. Oh, wow. But I I replay a tsunami over and over again, that there's like a huge tsunami and that people need to be saved. And like my house is like super safe. That's like my scenario I play. But that's the thing is like, there's oh, wow. nothing, there's nothing. I have no relation to a tsunami. I've never been in a, the, a wow. crisis like that. But that's my, that's at least for the last five years, that's been the scenario that replays. In my yeah, head, well, there's probably something happening in your like life that isn't exactly a tsunami, but creates the same emotions that you yeah. are experiencing. Because you could be trying to emotionally process something. You don't have to be physically trying to process the event. It could mm-hmm. be emotionally trying to process something. Yeah. So it doesn't have to like look exactly like what happened. Yeah. That's quite interesting. That's crazy. It's crazy that I've like- actually, yeah, I've no, actually no. made a video about this. I was like, cause I, cause I like, when I was talking to my fiance for the first time, mm-hmm. we talked about this and it clicked in my head. And I was like, what if maladaptive daydream is? And the reason we daydream is because we are unable to process memories the same as other people. Mm -hmm. So we rely on maladaptive daydreaming to process memories. And I was like, 
What if? What if? <laughs> what if our brain you know, just processes things differently? Yeah. You because what if we I, need that? No, I was literally, process, I was literally thinking in my head because you could you could argue that every single thing in your paracosm in your mouth like in your worlds are I mean pretty much every single thing is like there for a purpose and it is there from some sort of history some sort of memory some sort of part of your life that's why it's constructed so it could just be like that's how we're dealing with it it's in this fictional world where we look at it in a completely different way um and it's uh, kind of hidden all the meanings are hidden and you have to figure it out yeah that's what I'm saying like there was a cure tomorrow that the daydreaming but that you are is it within yourself like I can't give you that yeah it's crazy do you think you'll do it forever I I think I will do it at some level forever Mm -hmm. because again I do believe that in like my brain is unable to process very hairy things in a normal way and I rely on maladaptive daydreaming to do that so Mm -hmm. with anything and and life happens life happens I'm never not going to like, I, I'm, I can't sit here and be like, I'm never going to experience anything that is like heavy. Like mm-hmm. that's unrealistic. And I honestly believe that maladaptive daydream, like I rely on maladaptive daydreaming to process those memories. Mm-hmm. I don't think my brain is capable of doing it in any other way. Yeah. Damn. Damn. And I think that's like, that's true for a lot of maladaptive daydreamers. My, my psychiatrist said, because I was like, um at the time self-conscious about it and he was just like honestly like I'm happy that it was there and I was just like yeah that's also true you know like it's also a good thing and it's also like without it like who knows like where how we would really feel you know like how who knows like we might just be like in pits of depression or like yeah. stuck in literally stuck in your real life in a trauma like I don't I I don't fucking no I'm not even gonna claim to know but um Mm -hmm. but in a sense like it is um our method of survival and like yeah it's it was it really did help you know above all which is nice yeah 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 Yeah. um this is so heavy I know (laughs) no it's fine I mean it's just honest you know like it's not like heavy or not and there's so many like crazier things in the world this is just something like you and I experience and hopefully some other people like experience and resonate with it. But um, yeah, it's just like a niche problem that I am like putting and you are putting light to um, that mm-hmm. I'm glad like I can talk to someone about this. Like genuinely, I don't like, I literally like, I don't know who like who the hell else I could talk to about this. So it's really Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's really sick. Yeah. Um, we were saying that we're going to do um, another video kind of answering questions so because we're we we don't know how much to put in here about maladaptive daydreaming yeah and there's there's so many aspects to it um and it's like what like there is so much like so much um and there's no way to know what people like are really really wanting to know Mm -hmm. um so this is our open way to go open floor discussion to we're gonna do a part two and answer people's questions because we didn't even know where to go with this um there are so many pathways that we could have gone yeah like experience based like why it happens like problems like there's so much to touch on yeah um that we're doing a part two essentially um also evie has a youtube page if you want to do you want to plug it like whatever your um whatever you're so, like yeah it's and twitch and all of it it's literally eveline pahu um eve i'll link it E-E-E-N. below yeah yeah it'll pahu. be in the description it's like yeah I'll, I'll send you all of my stuff and then yeah okay perfect and she has more videos on maladaptive daydreaming which is like yeah, essentially like- my first intro so watch all of her videos yeah my most of my content is literally just maladaptive daydreaming that's literally why i made the youtube channel yeah no i support it you like stuck with like the one thing no one's fucking talking you know what i actually went on youtube recently there's so many more videos on maladaptive daydreaming just in the last year like four months ago there's people posting and like people have like actually started to talk about it yeah it's really good Yeah. yeah 
it's just it's just um I think most a lot of people don't know they do it that's what I'm going to assume yeah and so it's just gonna bring light to that and I think the thing is is the more we talk about it the more research that'll be done on it yeah so the more that medical professionals can help us Mm -hmm. yeah and we can get answers that we yeah. are like talking about in this video and like it could be this it could be this yeah like, we can get answers if we get people to like know about it yeah it's so like abstract at this point and it's basically just like yeah. us kind of like trying to connect the dots of what we think it might mean which mm-hmm. is all we can really do but yeah yeah <laughs> Well, Evie, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. I'm like, so it's so refreshing to talk to you. Honest, honest to God. Um, that's like coming from a genuine part of myself. So I thank am, you for inviting me. Oh my God. Of course. I, we've been like talking about doing this podcast for so long and like, I know, we finally, I know. like we finally I, I did it. Finally. No, it's like, yeah. now that we've done it once, the part two is going to be so easy. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out so easily. So I'm yeah. Excited. Um, and thank you for joining me. And that concludes this podcast. And please comment below what st- questions you want us to answer for part two. Thank you. Bye. Bye.